Earlier this year, there was an online survey that was conducted on about 819 Australian women who have experienced vaginal thrush. You can see some of the survey results on this slide, and I'm going to quickly just sort of mention and highlight some of that. So what we found is that of the respondents, about 65% of women experienced vaginal thrush in the last five years. So I mentioned earlier that vaginal thrush is not uncommon. But what we're looking for is women who are experiencing those two, three, four or more episodes of thrush per year, so in a 12-month period, that's when it becomes recurrent vaginal candidiasis. And as you can see on this slide, some of the respondents are actually falling into that category. Now, we have um, a response here about 45% of women reported negative impacts on quality of life, QOL, particularly in that younger women category who felt the effects more severely. So when the quality of life is impacted, we need to also take that into consideration as practitioners, what else is affected in their, in their life and what other things might be then contributing further to more episodes of thrush um, reoccurring. Now, what we found also was that when we asked these women, you know, what was the cause, what did they think or believe that the cause of vaginal thrush, most of them responded that it was in response to antibiotics and medications. So what we found is that only about 16% of the respondents knew that there was a candida or some form of yeast was the primary cause of vaginal thrush or that, vagina, uh, that thrush imbalance, which means that about 84% of the women who responded did not know the link between candida and vaginal thrush. So for us, the understanding that candida overgrowth is the primary cause of vaginal thrush is quite poor amongst the population. Now, in terms of symptoms, vaginal itching was reported as having the most impact on quality of life. Now, what's interesting for us is that there is a percentage of women who don't feel comfortable talking to a GP about vaginal thrush and the symptomology and the quality of life impacts. And this is where we as practitioners can play that really pivotal role and supportive role. Now, after giving a lot of our respondents information on horopito and the mechanisms of action, we showed them some of the studies, but 45% of these respondents um, were quite positive to trying horopito because they saw a benefit in using a natural product that could be used long term. And a lot of these respondents had already used other treatments that, that they found weren't as effective over the long run as something like horopito was showing to be. Now, this is a very small survey and it's quite localized. Um, it gives us an insight into the prevalence of thrush, um, what people understand about the condition and how they are currently managing it. But when we search for larger data, so for larger pieces of information, we know that on a global scale, it affects millions of women 